Oh, hi, we're already here. <laughs> oh my god. You are marrying me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you have entered the Chronics rabbit hole. For Jansen fans, we are back at story time number two, building and working. Everyone, let's show your support for Floor Jansen by telling us in the comments down below what your favorite Floor Jansen story is. All right. We got you to premium now. No more ads. We have a paddock, yet there is nothing surrounded yet. So we're gonna build um, the fence today. So uh, happy times, a little bit of physical work. Beautiful weather for it. Yeah. Let's go. Good attitude. Hello and welcome to episode two oh. of Saturday Storytime. Uh, as you can see, it's still summer, uh, very much so. Um, living mostly outside, just like this little lady that joined us for a couple of months ago. Hey, Lala. Oh. She used to live inside and now she can live both inside and outside. So she's been enjoying that quite a bit and uh, it's very nice to have her around. Um, yeah, maybe she even has some little kittens in her belly. We don't know yet. That will be fun. Um, it's a lot of home life since, well, of course, all of our lives are on hold as it is uh, quite a bit as a musician. It's really weird times to not be able to play music, um, go out and festival season should, of course, now be in at full spin. And um, yeah, uh, when I think about it, I get sad and angry. But at the same time, I'm really trying to not do that and focus on the things that are here because it's just wonderful to be home. And uh, I've been touring for over 20 years, so I know quite a bit about being away from home. And surely since uh, I moved to Sweden for about five years ago, I've never been home all the time uh, to see the spring come, to see the summer unfold and all small steps from the first little bit of green to this luscious explosion that I can call it here. Swedish nature is just, it's so beautiful. Uh, I knew that, but now I can see every small thing start to come alive. Every few weeks, new flowers start to bloom and other ones disappear. And out of nowhere, so there seems to be space in the, in the earth to grow new ones. And uh, they all have their, their, their moments. Um, well, you can clearly hear the birds around us. It's, uh, it's just a constant. They are always there to to sing along and to talk with each other and uh, uh, this is daytime obviously while I'm recording this but in the evening other birds take over and it's just it's amazing um, for me that is pure bliss uh, I really calm down I need to be in nature to be a balanced person uh, hence the fact I live here and, and uh, feel so well well, I, I um, took upon myself a little bit of 
garden projects and gardening and uh, gr for growing vegetables, uh, tomatoes, um, I'm going to be showing all of them. It's wonderful to see how they are growing. Uh, they've been enjoying the sun very much. Um, obviously they needed some help with the watering um, since we haven't had many, very much rain. So um, still it's pretty dry, but um, I've got potatoes and uh, parsnip. Um, I've got carrots and uh, different kinds of beans. Got my tomato plants. Uh, I have two different ones, and uh, somewhere along the process, I uh, forgot uh, which one is which. Mm, so I'm sure I'll find out when they start to actually have tomatoes. Right now, um, I'm waiting for the flowers to start blooming. So that's exciting. And then there are uh, different kinds of beans that. Um, um, that I hope will um, grow a bit bigger. I think they don't like the drought very much and the intense heat. I gave them, uh, I built them a little tent, um, not for them to specifically enjoy, but they need to climb up onto something. But I built it for Freya, my daughter. She's uh, three years old now, and uh, uh, I hope that the, they will kind of grow together so it becomes like a one big um, mm. tent of flowers and beans later on. So. Those are little things I can enjoy very much. Still has a lot of things to do at home. So sustaining too, good for her. Andy, like you as well. Now we have a riding paddock that is 20 meters um, wide and 40 meters long. And filled with good sand so that it's comfortable for the hooves of the horses and for their bodies to have a little bit of Bounce. of that like yeah. the reason why we buy good um, jogging shoes or you know sport shoes it's a bit of the same principle you want to have the horses comfortable when they when they train and um, so now we're building these we uh, <laughs> need to do this better <laughs> building it ourselves which I think is super fun to do just to get um, get a feeling of what you have but it's not just done by somebody else you get more feeling when you do it yourself mm -hmm. of course it's a learning process um, so we'll see if we're doing this correctly and if not we'll fix it yeah it's nice good weather good tools good company nice cats first video had a lot, a lot, a lot of really funny and very positive and very heartwarming uh, reactions and a remarkable amount of people commented on my arms. Now I think that the thumbnail kind of gave a wrong angle and gave away more than I actually have. Uh, yet again, a lot of people also wondered, what do you do to get those arms? Well, here's the secret, I don't work out. but. I live in the countryside and I like to do things myself. Mm -hmm. Take one of those, build a riding alley, something like that. Good training. Yeah. Bigger guns than me. I like doing things myself or with great help at home. It's nice to work with my hands. It's nice to look at what you have outside and think I built that. I think personally, that's a really nice thing to have. Uh, most um, of these that are standing uh, everywhere here in the paddocks, um, I put them down. I just was really having an unfortunate planting there because I did the majority of them in January. Here in Sweden, that means um, that it's cold. I had, I was lucky and the, the ground wasn't uh, frozen solid else it would have not worked. It was uh, pretty soft for the time of year, but that still means it's really, really rock hard. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, um, in this area, there are a lot of rocks. It's a really rocky area. <laughs> oh God, such a stupid joke. Anyway, it, as soon as you get the drill into the ground, it kind of says, stop, there's a stone, stop, there's a stone. And uh, I don't have an electrical uh, drill that's by hand. Really tough. But now that I've done that, every time I look at it, I think, I built that and it gives a sort of extra um, pride and satisfaction. All right, next one. <laughs> Nothing really much is happening uh, 
playing just wanted to be in the music, video. <laughs> but I am writing music. And uh, slowly but surely, I think I dare to call this a step towards a solo album, uh, a solo career, as you may call it. I think that's a huge step since Nightwish is the biggest, um, biggest thing in my life, of course, with music right now. And uh, I don't want that to change, um, but it's wonderful to write music and it's wonderful to yeah, be creative in these months that I am here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to discover new elements in my uh, songwriting skills. Uh, I feel very confident as a singer, uh, but not as a songwriter as of yet, because mm. I feel like I've been developing my vocals more than I've been developing my songwriting skills. Um, but that is a learning curve and that is daring to do it. And it's daring to send it to somebody else to say, what do you think? Uh, somebody else is in another songwriter. Would you want to write with me? Do you think this is good enough? And um, yeah, if so, what will your ideas do with mine and get into this creative process with other people? Super exciting to do. So my mind is constantly distracted by all those little melodies and ideas that I have in my head. That's a really wonderful thing that I, yeah, I want to share with you. I don't really dare to share anything else. Uh, it's uh, hopefully enough for you to know that something is cooking and um, we'll see what's, uh, what's gonna happen and also when. Uh, all those things are a little bit dependent on how creative I keep being and uh, when everything goes back to normal. But uh, it's, it's liberating in a sense to not have to have any form of planning. Creative processes uh, are very hard to plan anyway. So I'm, I'm really, uh, really happy with the, with the freedom that I have at the moment to kind of work on things um, as it comes and uh, enjoy the life here, as I said before, my whole life to the max, uh, really do that now that I can. My child is only this young once in her life and I'm so thrilled to be there every day with her, kiss her goodnight every night and see all the small steps she's making. Uh, um, I don't know if you're a parent, you might know or familiar anyway, uh, different ways, um, how much children develop in this age. And it's just so, so nice to, to see every, every bit of it. And um, yeah, once again, horseback riding, gardening, Lovely summer evenings are starting to happen now with my husband, just a good glass of wine and yeah, life as it is. And it's at the same time great to let my mind drift into the a possible future of a solo album, a solo career, uh, and to dream of when we can finally get back on stage with Nightwish and play all those new songs from human nature. It's, it's time. Mm. There are hilarious. Horses have so much personality. I think somebody's glad to Clearly. be back in this paddock. <laughs> Aww. But, um, yeah, here I am running after them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is episode number two. Um, let me know what you would like to see for number three. But really cool you've been staying on board. And uh, hope to see you next time. We will see you next time, y'all. 
I love seeing Lore's home and where she spends all of her time. Um, during the time that she, this was being recorded, that she was talking to us. Yeah. Um, that was a time where we all were kind of refiguring out what we were doing and like kind of where life was. Yeah. So um, I think it's really cool that she was um, looking into her own songwriting skills and kind of still maintaining her love for music, even if she couldn't be performing with Nightwish at that time. So I think that was amazing for her. A lot of growth and opportunity as well. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. I haven't heard any of her solo stuff. No, we did. We heard um, that one. It was Me a Without Patreon you? request. Um, I, I don't remember the name of the song, but we did hear that one. It was really good. Okay. So um, I'd love to hear more of her stuff if she has more. She has a bunch she of solo. So definitely so. let us know which uh, ones to react to next. And I'll show her the ones that I've at least reacted to myself because I don't mm -hmm. know if she was there for that one or not. I don't think so. I yeah. know I reacted to one. There you go. That's that good. I heard. Awesome. Um, but that was, it was just really cool seeing her working and doing things um, and building the fence. I love the guys. He doesn't know what he's doing. What yeah. is he doing? This guy also doesn't know what he's doing. I love those little commentaries she puts in. She's very funny. And it was cool to see her growth on her video skills too. Mm -hmm. Like she was adding more things. And then like she said, what you, what you uh, touched on. Um, she sings a lot and she sang a lot of other people's work, not necessarily mm -hmm. their work, but she said she needed to work on her songwriting herself out of her own mouth. So it was cool to see that she got the time to develop her songwriting skills because it is yeah. different from singing people's lyrics, which a lot of people don't know. Like the people singing the songs for bands a lot of the times aren't the ones who wrote the lyrics. Yeah, the lyrics are written by someone else and then yeah. sold through like Rush, Rush is one of Canada's biggest bands and the mm -hmm. singer, the bassist actually is not the person who writes the music. Mm -hmm. It's it's the drummer. So um, it's just cool to see how that works and that she got to develop that on her side. And we're curious, like the nail lady was saying, we all kind of got to reinvent ourselves during this pandemic. Uh, what did you guys reinvent yourself and what did you find in the pandemic that you didn't find before? We would love to know what you became because you got to see Floriansen mm -hmm. got her solar career out of this pandemic in a way. So that's also really cool. So let us know. I'll go first and I'll let you guys know for myself during the pandemic. Um, so when I was a child, I was in concert band and uh, during the pandemic, I bought a violin off a friend for a hundred bucks and I'm still trying to continue with it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not great, but I'm still going. <laughs> And with all this music we're listening to, with all this electric violin and stuff, oh I don't know how she's getting motivated to play more. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. We will definitely come back for story time number three. I hope you guys come back for it as well. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that like thumbs. Also subscribe if you have not yet. Nightwish Army, you are the best. Floriansen fans, thank you so much. And Floriansen, we hope you beat this uh, breast cancer. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing us the news and we will send you our prayers and good thoughts to you. Thank you so much, Flora. Thank you for letting us into your life and we are here to support you 100%. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. God Bye. bless. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. A special shout out goes out to our Patreon supporters. We appreciate you all so much.